A woman accused of hoarding dozens of animals faces a judge, and we're getting a look at the poor conditions police say the dogs were put in. Jessamine County Sheriff deputies are looking for a man who robbed a Kroger last week. Coming up, we'll tell you how you can help track him down. A man convicted of causing a deadly crash learns his sentence. I ought to give him an opportunity to learn from his mistakes. We'll hear from the victim's family on the punishment. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening. She's accused of hoarding dozens and dozens of animals. And today, a woman in charge of a Laurel County Animal Rescue Group was arraigned on charges of animal cruelty. State police say Stephanie Fields and the Homeward Bound Rescue Group kept more than 130 animals in deplorable conditions. Now we're getting a look at how police say the animals were being kept. We want to warn you, some of these images may be hard to look at. Victor Puente has our top story at 530. There was a woman in the courtroom today who tells me she got a dog from Homeward Bound. She says she spent a lot of money on vet care because of the shape he was in when she got him from that rescue. And so for two years, he's given me a whole lot of love, but he's cost me a whole lot of money. Elizabeth Dawson says in the first two weeks of owning Pooh Bear, she spent more than $1,500 on veterinarian care. She says she got him from a Homeward Bound adoption event in 2013. He had the ear infection and he had worms. She was at the Laurel County Justice Center this morning for Stephanie Fields' arraignment. It was scheduled for 11 o'clock, but court workers say she and her attorney came in early, entered a not guilty plea, and left. State police say she kept more than 170 dogs at her home. Yesterday, a volunteer with the Friends of the Laurel County Animal Shelter posted these pictures they say were taken from inside that home. State police say that volunteer accompanied them as they removed those dogs. At the time, they called the living conditions inside the home unacceptable. Fields has been charged with dozens of counts of animal cruelty. Elizabeth Dawson says that when she notified the group of her issues with Pooh Bear, they offered to take him back. They said, well, you can bring him back. We'll give you your money back. I said, no, buddy. There is no way you'll ever get your hands on this dog again. Court workers tell me Fields will be back in court in May. In Laurel County, Victor Puente, WKYT. The Laurel County Animal Shelter says they have moved many of those animals to other shelters and rescue groups. He's accused of robbing a Kroger store pharmacy. Tonight, deputies in Jessamine County are hoping someone will recognize a man caught on camera during the crime. The theft happened last week. Police say the man handed a threatening note to a clerk and then took off with some prescription pills. New at 5.30, Mike Linden takes a closer look at that surveillance video. According to Jessamine County Sheriff deputies, a man robbed the Kroger Pharmacy on Bellarive Boulevard in Nicholasville last Wednesday night. He was uh, requesting uh, and he did uh, leave with an uh, undisclosed amount of the medicine, uh, painkillers, oxycodone. Deputies say the man, seen in this surveillance video wearing a baseball cap, baggy blue jeans, and a surgical mask, hands a note to the clerk with a disturbing message on it. Fill this order of oxycodone uh, within 30 seconds and no one will get hurt. Peel says the clerks filled the order of two bottles of the painkiller and the suspect left the store promptly after. While details of the suspect are still quite vague at this point, Jessamine County Sheriff deputies say the clerks did the right thing when complying with the suspect because it was unclear whether or not he was armed at the time of the robbery. She did the right thing in complying and not trying to uh, resist or anything, but he did, uh, he did comply that he would hurt someone. Peel says no one was hurt and the investigation is ongoing. We want this out here to anybody with information to call us to... Uh, Give us information on it. In Nicholasville, Mike Linden, WKYT. The man is charged with first degree burglary, which carries a penalty of up to 20 years in jail. It is definitely starting to feel like winter out there. Some of us saw some snow out there, even. Yes, and the snow showers have not moved out just yet. He doesn't have his snow boots on yet, but Chief <laughs> Ian Rogers, Chris Bailey's here nonetheless. Yeah, give us a few weeks and we'll try to break out the snow boots. But in the short term, yeah, it's been the on and off snow showers and squalls that we've talked about for a while, covering the ground at times into parts of especially uh, southern and eastern Kentucky. What we're seeing out there now, you're going to get some holes in the clouds, you're going to get some flurries, then you're going to get something that comes through and maybe coats the rooftops a little, uh, you know, deck duster, perhaps. 
30s across the region. 10 degrees colder than at this same point yesterday into much of central and eastern Kentucky with those numbers that are indeed in the low 30s. Look at your Defender Radar Network now. All of a sudden, west of 75, little increase in some of those snow showers from Franklin County through uh, the Anderson County area down toward Mercer County. Lexington Metro to Georgetown to Paris, not a whole lot. Then we see a little increase again. Eastbound on 64 through Montgomery County over toward the Round County area. Southeastern Kentucky, a few hot spots here earlier in the day had some local half inch amounts. As we look ahead, we've got a lot of winter that is on the way over the next couple of weeks. It's trying to make up for lost time, guys, and we know how much time we lost for the month of December. We'll talk about the possibility of the other shoe dropping here in just a few minutes. Chris, thank you. A southern Kentucky man convicted in a deadly crash has been sentenced. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Laurel County. 23-year-old Justin Wibbles was convicted of murder for a crash that killed 61-year-old Jerry Thompson in June of 2014. Police say Wibbles was speeding past vehicles in the emergency lane on Highway 30 when he crossed the center line and crashed into Thompson's vehicle. Today, a judge sentenced Wibbles to 20 years in prison. We didn't want him to get life because everybody deserves a second chance. But um, the 20 year sentence, I think it went well, and you know, it'll give him an opportunity to learn from his mistakes. The jury originally recommended 20 years. Wibbles will get credit for time served. In Martin County, a man convicted of a double murder has learned how long he'll spend in prison. Ori Spence Jr. pled guilty last year to shooting and killing his cousin, Edgar Hedrick, and his wife, April, in 2013. Today, a judge sentenced Spence to 30 years. Family members of the victims were in court with a message for Spence. God to pay for the lives you take. And I hope you never get out because OJ, you'll kill again. Spence was sentenced to 30 years for each murder, but the sentences will be served concurrently. And in Knox County, state police are warning people about a possible scam. Troopers say several people have received calls from a man saying he's a deputy with the sheriff's office. The man goes on to tell people they've missed, grand, or missed jury duty and have been fined. The victims are asked to pay electronically or, be given, or give their credit card information. State police say you should never give out your credit card number over the phone. A former Louisville priest charged with child exploitation has pled guilty to the crime. Stephen Pohl originally pled not guilty to the charge back in November. Today, he pled guilty to access with intent to view. Pohl was a priest at St. Margaret Mary Parish, but he resigned in August after being accused of looking at child pornography. The judge will now decide whether or not to accept the plea. The Archdiocese of Louisville issued a statement this afternoon saying, quote, we welcome the news that Father Pohl is pleading guilty and accepting responsibility for his actions. New tonight, Transylvania University is teaming up with the Lexington Fayette Urban County government to improve a busy street. The two will work together on the $1.3 million project to improve 4th Street between Upper and Jefferson Streets. The plan will include new sidewalks, street and pedestrian lighting, signage, and additions to the Legacy Trail. They expect to start work next year. The lure of big money can be intoxicating, no matter how old you are. But as you will hear and see, beware of a scam artist who will try to prey on that desire and in the process steal every penny you have. I was pretty rocked back because I just, we never thought that anybody, you know, everybody we talked to in the law enforcement said, you know, I know this stuff goes on all the time. There's just nothing, you know, it's so untraceable. Kimberly felt utterly helpless after learning her now deceased in-laws, Marilyn and Don, had lost their life savings in a Jamaican lottery sweepstakes scam. Marilyn had been asking people for money. She had even gone through the church directory. The first clue that something was wrong. She got a cell phone and I didn't even give us the number, you know. So that's when we knew for sure that that's, that was the tool. They also noticed piles of mail and decided to call the couple's bank for an update. Your mom was just in here. She just took out $2,400. She's heading, the, a gentleman's driving her in a, I don't know, whatever car. He has a white ball cap on. And I, I know they're heading right over to the grocery store. To put the money on a green card that allowed them to send the cash to the scam artists. The couple thought they were paying the taxes needed to receive their lottery winnings. 
Kimberly and her husband sat their parents down and told them there was no jackpot and that they were caught in a scam. But the couple continued to send money. Really? These people still have a hold of you after all the people that you've loved have sat down with you and told you it's not ever going to happen? Pretty frustrating and heartbreaking. A, warner from, a warning from postal inspectors, no legitimate lottery will ever ask for money up front. Also, as a family member, you can look at the phone calls, both incoming and outgoing. See if you recognize the phone numbers. The numbers 876 should be your first clue. If you see 876, they are being targeted by a Jamaican lottery scheme. It is the start of the new year and the start of a new job for several elected state officials. Five statewide constitutional officers were officially sworn in today. Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes, Attorney General Andy Bashir, Auditor Mike Harmon, Treasurer Allison Ball, and Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles, each taking the oath of office. Lundergan Grimes is in her second term as Secretary of State. AG Andy Bashir, the son of former Governor Steve Bashir, and the other three sworn in are newcomers to statewide office. But they all say they're ready to get started. Number one, uh, ending child abuse uh, in this Commonwealth. Uh, second, better protecting our seniors from scams and abuse. Third, uh, ending that rape kit backlog and finding those victims the justice that they deserve. Uh, and finally, finding workable solutions to this drug epidemic. The Associated Press reports that the statewide officers are some of the youngest in the country. Four of the five are under 40 years old. The Kentucky General Assembly is set to start tomorrow. And Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is still considering a Senate run. Bill Bryant has the details in the bottom line. Good evening. The Kentucky General Assembly starts at high noon tomorrow amid speculation that pension shortfalls and the state budget will dominate a lot of the discussion. Kentucky's 100 representatives and 38 senators report to the state capitol to begin a 60-day session. Republicans strongly control the Senate. Democrats cling to a razor-thin majority in the House. There is pressure to do something to shore up pensions that are also dragging down the state's bond rating. The new Republican Governor Matt Bevening acknowledges the pension problems. He says they will affect his budget proposal that he'll deliver on January 26th. Lawmakers don't typically take major actions before the filing deadline, which is in late January, when they find out who might challenge them for their seat. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray said to be still mulling over a campaign for the Democratic nomination for the U.S. Senate. Gray has said he loves his current job, but acknowledges looking into the Senate race. Republican Rand Paul is seeking a second Senate term while also running for president. Former President Bill Clinton returned to the campaign trail today to help his wife's effort to capture the White House. Hillary Clinton was confronted by a heckler in New Hampshire Sunday. Catherine Prudholm O'Brien is a Republican state representative as she tried to interrupt Clinton and raise questions about her husband's infidelity in the past. The Democratic frontrunner said, you are rude and I'm never ever calling on you. 1995 Republican nominee for Governor Larry Forgey is said to be resting comfortably after heart surgery. His sister, Senator Alice Forgey Kerr, reports her brother is doing better after suffering a heart attack during the holidays. Forgey's a longtime attorney and conservative activist. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Now.